Albert Betz December 25, 1885 to April 16, 1968 was a German physicist and a pioneer of wind turbine technology. Betz's law indicates the maximum power that can be extracted from the wind, independent of the design of a wind turbine in open flow. It was published in 1919 by the German physicist Albert Betz. The law is derived from the principles of conservation of mass and momentum of the airstream flowing through an idealized actuator disk that extracts energy from the windstream. According to Betz's law, no turbine can capture more than 16 by 2759.3% of the kinetic energy in wind. The factor 16 by 27.0.593 is known as Betz's coefficient. Practical utility scale wind turbines achieve at peak 75 to 80 percent of the Betz limit. Betz law, the ideal breaking of the wind, the more kinetic energy a wind turbine pulls out of the wind, the more the wind will be slowed down as it leaves the left side of the turbine in the picture. Picture. If we try to extract all the energy from the wind, the air would move away with the speed zero, i.e. the air could not leave the turbine. In that case we would not extract any energy at all, since all of the air would obviously also be prevented from entering the rotor of the turbine. In the other extreme case, the wind could pass through our tube above without being hindered at all. In this case we would likewise not have extracted any energy from the wind. We can therefore assume that there must be some way of breaking the wind which is in between these two extremes, and is more efficient in converting the energy in the wind to useful mechanical energy. The Betz limit is based on an open disk actuator. If a diffuser is used to collect additional wind flow and direct it through the turbine, more energy can be extracted, but the limit still applies to the cross-section of the entire structure. Concepts, Betz's law applies to all Newtonian fluids, including wind. If all of the energy coming from wind movement through a turbine were extracted as useful energy, the wind speed afterward would drop to zero. If the wind stopped moving at the exit of the turbine, then no more fresh wind could get in, it would be blocked. In order to keep the wind moving through the turbine, there has to be some wind movement, however small, on the other side with some wind speed greater than zero, zero. Betz's law shows that as air flows through a certain area, and as wind speed slows from losing energy to extraction from a turbine, the airflow must distribute to a wider area. As a result, geometry limits any turbine efficiency to a maximum of 59.3%. Betz's law significantly influences the design of wind turbines by setting a theoretical efficiency limit. Here are some key impacts, efficiency optimization, since Betz's law states that no wind turbine can capture more than 59.3% of the kinetic energy in wind, designers aim to approach this limit as closely as possible. Modern turbines typically achieve 70 to 80 percent of the Betz limit. Blade design, the shape and size of the blades are crucial. Designers focus on aerodynamics to maximize energy capture while minimizing drag. The blades must slow down the wind just enough to extract energy without stopping it completely. Turbine placement, to maximize efficiency, turbines are placed in locations with consistent and strong winds. The spacing between turbines in a wind farm is also optimized to reduce interference and maximize energy capture. Control systems, advanced control sy systems are used to adjust the blade pitch and yaw to optimize the angle of attack and maximize energy capture under varying wind conditions. Structural design, the overall structure, including the hub, generator, and supporting tower, is designed to withstand the mechanical stresses while maintaining efficiency. Betz's law is one of several theoretical limits that define the maximum efficiency of energy conversion processes. Here's how it compares to a few other well-known limits. Carnot efficiency, this limit applies to heat engines and is based on the second law of thermodynamics. It defines the maximum efficiency that a heat engine can achieve when converting heat into work, depending on the temperatures of the heat source and sink. Shockley Quiser limit, this limit applies to photovoltaic solar cells and defines the maximum theoretical efficiency of a single junction solar cell under standard test conditions. The Shockley Quiser limit is approximately 33.7% for converting sunlight into electricity. Betz's law, as mentioned, Betz's law sets the maximum efficiency for wind turbines at 59.3% of the kinetic energy in wind. This limit is derived from the principles of conservation of mass and momentum. Gibbs free energy, in chemical reactions, the maximum amount of work that can be extracted is determined by the change in Gibbs free energy. 
This limit is crucial for under understanding the efficiency of fuel cells and other chemical energy conversion processes. Each of these limits is based on fundamental physical principles and helps engineers and scientists design more efficient energy conversion systems within the constraints of these theoretical maxima. There have been several exciting advancements in wind turbine technology recently. Here are some key developments, larger turbines, modern wind turbines are becoming larger, with some models reaching capacities of over 10 megawatts. These larger turbines can capture more wind energy and are particularly effective in offshore wind farms. Taller towers, taller towers allow turbines to access stronger and more consistent winds at higher altitudes. This increases the overall efficiency and energy output of the turbines. Advanced blade designs, innovations in blade design, such as aeroelastic tailoring and thicker flatback airfoils, improve aerodynamic performance and reduce mechanical stress on the turbine. Additive manufacturing, the use of 3D printing for manufacturing turbine blades allows for more complex and efficient designs, as well as on-site construction and assembly. Artificial intelligence and robotics, AI and robotics are being used to optimize turbine performance, predict maintenance needs, and reduce downtime. These technologies help in monitoring and adjusting turbine operations in real time. Floating offshore wind turbines, floating wind turbines are being developed to harness wind energy in deep waters where traditional fixed bottom turbines are not feasible. These turbines can be deployed in areas with stronger and more consistent winds. Winds. Closed loop recycling, efforts are being made to develop recyclable turbine blades to address the environmental impact of decommissioned turbines. This involves using materials that can be easily recycled at the end of their life cycle. These advancements are helping to make wind energy more efficient, cost-effective, and sustainable. Understanding Betz's law helps engineers and designers create more efficient and effective wind turbines, contributing to the development of sustainable energy solutions. The second law of thermodynamics imposes a limit on the conversion of heat, disorganized energy, into work, organized energy, given by the well-known Carnot efficiency. However, for the conversion of a form of organized energy, macroscopic kinetic energy, for example, as an airflow has, into another form of organized energy, such as work, for example, there is no limit, except that imposed by the first law of thermodynamics and the inherent principle of conservation of energy, that is, 100%. Therefore, the aforementioned reality contrasts with the well-known bets limit for the maximum efficiency of an ideal wind turbine bets, from which it follows that the conversion into work of the kinetic energy of an incompressible fluid flow is limited to 16 by 27, a 59.3%. It is important to note that two other authors who lived at the same time as Albert Betts did the same research on their own Van Keek, 2007. Other authors, for example, Greet 1980 and Alaverdian and Calafian 2021, point out errors in the calculation of the Betz's maximum theoretical efficiency, calling the method's utility into question. However, the most useful formula, formula, which is the one that allows us to figure out a wind turbine's maximum ideal power, cannot be argued with because it does not depend on the efficiency mentioned above. As a result, it is still in use today via Nueva and Fejo, 2010. In the work of Alaverdi in 2020, a new model was proposed for the efficiency of converting flow energy into work for compressible fluids. This model takes into account both isothermal and non-isothermal flows, that is, work extraction from flow kinetic energy and from flow enthalpy, respectively. For the isothermal case, which is also looked at in this work but for incompressible fluids, an implicit efficiency expression was found that, when simplified to the ideal case, that is, one-dimensional and isentropic flow, gives the same expression as the one found in this work. The apparent discrepancy between the maximum efficiency allowed by thermodynamics and that proposed by Betts is investigated in his paper, which begins by reproducing the steps that led to the calculation of the referred Betts limit. As a result, a result, a simple explanation for this discrepancy is provided, which appears to be pedagogically relevant. In addition, two methodologies for calculating the theoretical maximum efficiency in accordance with thermodynamics are described in this work. In the present analysis, it is assumed that there are no heat exchanges with the fluid, that the flow is isothermal and isobaric dissipative effects are absent, which entails that the fluid is incompressible and that its entropy remains constant, as the thermodynamic state of the fluid remains unchanged under these conditions. In this work, 
The idea that the flow has organized macroscopic kinetic energy means that the velocity at the entrance and exit of the stream tube is one-dimensional. Recognition Betz received the Ludwig Prandtl Ring from the Deutsche Gesellschaft für Luft und die Raumfahrt German Society for Aeronautics and Astronautics for outstanding contribution in the field of aerospace engineering in 1958. Betz was awarded the Carl Friedrich Gauss Medal of the West German Academy of Science in 1965. A street is named after him in Munich and in Hamburg. His original house in Göttingen is noted as a town monument. Economic relevance, the Betz limit places an upper bound on the annual energy that can be extracted at a site. Even if a hypothetical wind blew consistently for a full year, no more than the Betz limit of the energy contained in that year's wind could be extracted. Essentially increasing system economic efficiency results from increased production per unit, measured per square meter of vein exposure. An increase in system efficiency is required to bring down the cost of electrical power production. Efficiency increases may be the result of engineering of the wind capture devices, such as the configuration and dynamics of wind turbines, that may increase the power generation from these systems within the BETS limit. System efficiency increases in power application, transmission or storage may also contribute to a lower cost of power per unit. Proof, the BETS limit is the maximum possible energy that may be derived by means of an infinitely thin rotor from a fluid flowing at a certain speed. In order to calculate the maximum theoretical efficiency of a thin rotor of, for example, a windmill one imagines it to be replaced by a disc that withdraws energy from the fluid passing through it. At a certain distance behind this disc the fluid that is passed through flows with a reduced velocity. Assumptions, the rotor does not possess a hub and is ideal, with an infinite number of blades, which have no drag. Any resulting drag would only lower this idealized value. The flow into and out of the rotor is axial. This is a control volume analysis, and to construct a solution, the control volume must contain all flow going in and out, Failure to account for that flow would violate the conservation equations. The flow is non-compressible. Density remains constant, and there is no heat transfer. Uniform thrust is exerted on the disc or rotor. Understanding the BETS results, intuitively, the speed ratio of V2 by V1 equals 0.333 between outgoing and incoming wind, leaving it about a third of the speed it came in, would imply higher losses of kinetic energy. But since a larger area is needed for slower moving air, energy is conserved. All energy entering the system is taken into consideration, and local radial kinetic energy can have no effect on the outcome, which is the final energy state of the air leaving the system, at a slower speed, larger area, and accordingly its lower energy can be calculated. The last step in calculating the BETS efficiency CP is to divide the calculated power extracted from the flow by a reference power value. The BETS analysis uses for its power reference, reasonably, the power of air upstream moving at V1 contained in a cylinder with the cross-sectional area S of the rotor. BETS's limit does not take into account that for fast-moving wind turbines is that as the wind speed inc increases, the energy recovered increases and the stresses in the blades increase. Kinetic energy and potential energy increase. When a fast-moving wind turbine is stopped, the stresses on the blades are low. When you leave the turbine free to recover energy, the kinetic energy and potential energy increase. In theory it is possible to recover about 60% 16 by 27 of the kinetic energy of the wind to produce energy, but the problem is that 60% of the kinetic energy of the wind is used to produce stress on the turbine, which is contrary to the conservation of energy. That's theory does not take into account the tip speed ratio of fast-moving wind turbines. Points of interest the BETS limit has no dependence on the geometry of the wind extraction system, therefore S may take any form provided that the flow travels from the entrance to the control volume to the exit, and the control volume has uniform entry and exit velocities. Any extraneous effects can only decrease the performance of the system usually a turbine since this analysis was idealized to disregard friction. Any non-ideal effects would detract from the energy available in the incoming fluid, lowering the overall efficiency. Some manufacturers and inventors have made claims of exceeding the limit by using nozzles and other wind diversion devices, usually by misrepresenting the BETS limit and calculating only the rotor area and not the total input of air contributing to the wind energy extracted from the system. Modern development, in 1934 H. Glauert derived the expression for turbine efficiency, when the angular component of velocity is taken into account, 
by applying an energy balance across the rotor plane. Due to the Glauert model, efficiency is below the bet's limit and asymptotically approaches this limit when the tip speed ratio goes to infinity. In 2001, Gorbin, Gorlov and Silentiev introduced an exactly solvable model GGS that considers non-uniform pressure distribution and curvilinear flow across the turbine plane issues not included in the BETS approach. They utilized and modified the Kirchhoff model, which describes the turbulent weight behind the actuator as the degenerated flow and uses the Euler equation outside the degenerate area. The GGS model predicts that peak efficiency is achieved when the flow through the turbine is approximately 61% of the total flow which is very similar to the BETS result of 2 by 3 for a flow resulting in peak efficiency, but the GGS predicted that the peak efficiency itself is much smaller 30.1% in 2008. Viscous computations based on computational fluid dynamics CFD were applied to wind turbine modeling and demonstrated satisfactory agreement with experiment. Computed optimal efficiency is, typically, between the BETS limit and the GGS solution.